Today, we're looking at Robert Oster's Deep Sea. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, Robert Oster's Deep Sea is kind of a teal-colored ink. Don't see a lot like that. To make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I then put the ink into a different pen for a day. I then put it into a Nemasign Singularity with a fine nib to take my notes for this video. Now, before we go to the writing samples, let's look at the sciencey bits. And up first is the chromatography. And I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and I immediately dunk it in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. We see this very light purple on the bottom and it comes up into a green and then into a really nice blue. This ink is super nice. The one on the right I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. And the bottom line of where I put the ink down, it's got a little bit heavier purple line that's there, but other than that, this chromatography very much looks the same, which makes me feel that this ink's gonna have almost no real hold on. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it might be to clean from your pens. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, although there is a little bit of spread and a little bit of feather, it holds up pretty good. It makes me feel confident that I would not lose what was written if I had to highlight it, so I feel this is safe for note takers. Water completely reactivates and starts pulling most of that ink entirely off the page. I can't quite see the dots of the dot paper through what was removed, but it's removing a lot and that was only 30 seconds. Pen flush does a lot of what water does. It goes a little bit farther. We do see some of the white of the paper coming through in a couple spots and we can see the dots of the rhodia paper coming through. I still think water's all we're gonna need here. Bleach completely obliterates everything that was there. And when I put the towel down, you see it removed most of the colors, leaving only some of that blue behind. But there should be no reason to get to the point of bleach to clean this from your pens. For the inks I've tested, I have found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Robert Oster's Deep Sea has a viscosity of 2.33. That's a very normal flow for an ink. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done with the extra fine and medium nib on Clairefontaine, Tomoe River, and Rhodia paper. For the inks I've tested, I've found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. And Robert Oster's Deep Sea has an average dry time of 21 seconds seconds, which is still normal. It's the high side of normal, but it is still normal. Now, let's look at the writing samples. I picked this ink up in sample form, and to keep my writing sample consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's look at Clairefontaine. Now this isn't bleed through, this is me sloppy. We hear that a lot. I'm sloppy a lot. I'm sorry. That's not bleed. We get no bleed. We get no ghosting. The 1.1 gives us no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, and definitely shading all over the place. It's very nice. As a tone, this is very, very nice. The extra fine, much deeper tone, darker, Gives us no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, not a ton of color variation here where it's going down very uh, wet. 14 seconds to dry. The medium gives us no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. We do get color variation through all of this writing, and it, it looks nice. This, this shows us why so many people like these tones, these colors of ink. It's great. This color makes me feel like when I'm looking at the sample, I should see a little shark in the distance. It's, it's great. This is that clear water, sunny day, you're at 100 feet down, color of the ocean. This is a great color. 
really stand out fantastic in so many ways. 19 seconds to dry. The extra fine, the medium, uh, scrubby, the extra fine shows us no color variation. We didn't get any color variation. The medium shows us the color variation that we got. And you could recover this if you smeared it while you were writing. So, Tomoy River, ignoring the scrubby where it goes on extra thick. We get no bleeding. We do get ghosting. The 1.1 gives no feather, no spread. We do get minor haloing around, which is very nice. No sheen. And some shading. We get some shading on Tomoe River with a 1.1. That's a strong shading ink. Then we go to Extra Fine. It gets a bit darker in tone. No feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. 20 seconds to dry. Same tone with the medium. No feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade. And 39 seconds to dry. The scrubby for the extra fine and the fine, or the extra fine and the medium, both show us that we're not going to get color variation, and we didn't. The smear test shows we're not going to recover it, but that is a fantastic color. That is really just a beautiful color, even on the cream paper. I like cream paper; it it, it tends to bring out certain tones in the color. This one just looks nice on every paper. This, as a color, is great. I don't run to teals and turquoise. This is the one I would run to. So I test Rhodia. Other than the scrubby where I put it on like an idiot, we get no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 gives us no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. We do get shading, not a ton of shading, but we do get some nice shading here. But again, that's the... the stub squeegeeing it down to make it a bit drier as it goes down because as we've seen in the past we see it again here with the extra fine the coating on the paper destroys the shading of this ink such a beautiful ink being destroyed by rhodia paper a good paper i use it a lot but sometimes it destroys some of the shading of the ink and then we have to choose pens to make it look better the extra fine has no feather spread halo sheen or shade it's lost here it the ink sits on top long enough that it levels out and then dries give in 12 seconds, losing the shading. Same tone, same problem with the medium. No feather, no spread, no halo, sheen, or shade. 20 seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine and the medium show us we're not going to get any color variation, and we didn't. The smear test says you could likely recover this if you did smear it, but I put this into a Nemasign Singularity, which is a very dry nib. The tone is quite different than I got with the X450, or, or the X750 on the extra fine. This is only a fine. This was an extra fine. It's really a matter of the manufacturer. I want to say that this one's a Bach manufacturer, I think. If I'm wrong, correct me, please. And these are Yovo nibs. So there's a, just a difference in manufacture between the Yovo and the Bach. And that's what I believe. I believe the Singularity uses the Bach, or the Nemesine. The color, the tone, is entirely different. Much lighter. Lighter than even the 1.1. And color variation all the way through in my notes. Now, that to me means take this to a dry pen. I might, again, be one of the only people in the fountain pen world that seems to like dry pens. Everybody wants these super wet pens. But I prize the shade over anything else in these inks or performance. So I like drier pens to be able to see that shading. Plus, I don't want to wait nine years for it to dry. I use the Momokaki paper. M-O-M-O-K-A-K-I. I'm going to keep putting it until someone does it. Correct me on how to say that, please. We get no bleeding, no ghosting. No ghosting. Looks way worse on camera. It is not bad in person. The 1.1 gives no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade. The extra fine has no feather, spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. Nine seconds to dry. The medium, on the other hand, while it has no feather, spread, halo, or sheen, it does start giving us some shading on this paper. 15 seconds to dry, but we see the shading in lazy, we see it in brown, we see it in the, and I'm going to go ahead and back myself up on some of that feathering, because I do see a bunch of tiny little feathers starting out, but they were so minimal, I went right past them. 
it makes certain parts of certain letters look just a little bit blurry. This would not stop me from using this ink on this paper, but if you're that anal retentive about it, it might stop you. I don't see this as a horrible combination, but I think this ink belongs in a drier pen. So I tested Twisby paper, which gave no bleed, no ghosting. The 1.1 gave no feather spread. It did halo a little bit, which I have very rarely get to see on this paper. No sheen. It did shade some. The top of the B is darker. The top of the T is darker. The bottom of the S is darker. So it's very nice shading in the 1.1. The extra fine, slightly darker tone with no feather spread, halo sheen, and yes, we do get some shading. I see it in lazy. I see it in brown. I see it in over. Only 11 seconds to dry here. The medium, on the other hand, where it gets even darker again, sometimes when it gets darker, we lose the shading. Has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, 18 seconds to dry. When I look at the scrubby, the extra fine shows us that we're going to get some shading, especially if you look far left to far right. The medium shows us no shading. Now that's exactly what we got in the writing sample. But the smear test, I don't know if you could recover this if you smeared it based on that smear test. And that's all that I have for the writing sample. Instead of finding inks that look like Robert Oster's Deep Sea, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I've chosen Colorverse Black Hole because this is a great dark black. Before I give my opinion on this ink, I would ask if you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I would invite you to subscribe. So what do I think of Robert Oster's Deep Sea? I think this ink shows non-believers why so many like those teal and turquoise inks. They haven't been my favorite. They're, I don't know that they're ever going to be my favorite, but there are some teals and turquoise that I find very pleasant, and this one has that feel of the tropical ocean just looking at its color. It is truly fantastic. If you have someone in your life that does not like teal or turquoise inks, this is one to have them try because it is likely to change their mind. Thanks for watching.